ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Hey everybody, welcome back. I uh, hope you are having a good week so far. So this week we're talking about art as activism. Last time we looked at street art, graffiti art, murals, and guerrilla art. This week, the topic is power to the people. We'll look at public art made to raise awareness or affect some sort of change in the art world and beyond. One of the main forms of public art made for activist purposes are protest posters. Posters have to convey a lot of information in a small amount of space. They have to be portable, they have to have strong visual impact, and oftentimes they have to incorporate text as well. Above all, they have to communicate some sort of social or political message, most often to raise awareness about inequality or injustice. What do you think makes a successful protest poster? Which one of these three examples do you think is the most successful? Let's take a look at one of the most famous examples of a protest poster. It's the Silence Equals Death poster created in 1987 and used in protest by the activist group ACT UP, which stands for AIDS Coalition to Unleash Power. Yes, when we really act up, we have a big impact and we get what we're demanding and when we're silent, we don't. The title phrase refers to the fact that the Reagan administration had been totally silent on all of the AIDS deaths in this country. And the fact that if we don't begin to talk about this pandemic, we can't start to find solutions. They used a pink triangle because of its association with the persecution of gay people in Nazi Germany. Keith Haring, who we talked about a few weeks ago, was an out gay man and an artist living in New York during the AIDS crisis. He dedicated a lot of his work to fighting AIDS and promoting safe sex. Unfortunately, he himself died of AIDS in 1990. Grand Fury was another activist group that used art to raise awareness about and eventually end the AIDS crisis. They used a lot of in-your-face imagery placed in public spaces, like on buses and subways. Part of this was to counter the silence surrounding the AIDS crisis and call out the Reagan administration but it was also to raise awareness of the LGBTQ community who were in many ways, even in New York, still living in the shadows. The slogan, we're here, we're queer, get used to it, was popularized by the group Queer Nation in the early 1990s, for example. Felix Gonzalez Torres is one of my favorite artists of all time. Can we just take a moment to appreciate him? Gonzalez Torres was born in Cuba and lived in New York City most of his adult life. He also passed away from AIDS, and before he passed, he also lost his partner to AIDS. In his work, such as Untitled, Portrait of Ross in LA, he used art to convey a sense of loss, as well as create a participatory artwork. Visitors see a pile of candy in the corner and are invited to take a piece of candy from the pile. The weight of the pile is supposedly the weight of his partner Ross when they were in Los Angeles. He also created billboards installed in 24 locations throughout New York City. It's a photograph of an empty bed that looks like it was recently slept in. The loss of his partner is felt in a really intimate way made public. In one interview, Felix Gonzalez Torres said that, when people ask me, who is your public? I say honestly, without skipping a beat, Ross. The public was Ross. The rest of the people just come to the work. AIDS was and still is a global pandemic, and yet many people living with and dying from AIDS and those who cared about them felt like the world had not paid attention to this pandemic because it was seen as a disease that only affected gay men. Of course, we know that's not true, but there was definitely the stigma attached to this disease, which made action incredibly slow 
and which is why there was so much anger and frustration expressed through activist art. The AIDS Memorial Quilt is probably the most significant and large scale public art piece about the crisis and one that really helped bring attention to the crisis. It was hard to ignore. It was composed of more than 50,000 individual three by six foot memorial panels commemorating more than 105,000 individual lives of people who died of AIDS, sewn together by friends, lovers, and family members. The site of the AIDS Memorial Quilt is significant as well. Placed at the foot of the seat of power in the United States, it was meant to create a strong contrast or juxtaposition between the handmade colorful quality of the quilts and the stark white neoclassical building of the White House. A similar connection can be seen in this piece from 2013 by Suzanne Lacey, a performance artist called Artist Project Between the Door and the Street. Here at the foot of the Brooklyn Museum of Art, a neoclassical building as well, um, the artist uses that architecture as a backdrop for radical action. Between the Door and the Street grew out of a series of wide-ranging conversations between Lacey and a group of activist women in New York City, held over the course of five months. After engaging almost 400 women and a few men from activist organizations in a lengthy preparation period, the final performance took place on 60 stoops in Brooklyn and reflected the region's vast diversity. An estimated 2,500 people entered the closed-off street through a sound installation. Along the length of the street, the constellation of groups of people on each porch, emphasized by a sweeping yellow line on the street curbs and punctuated with yellow potted flowers, with performers wrapped in yellow pashminas, resolved into distinctly individual groups with their own topics. Conversations were unscripted but choreographed from questions forwarded by each group revealing the extent of activist engagement on issues of gender, race, ethnicity, and class. The Gorilla Girls have been at the forefront of activist art, fighting for a more equitable art world for women and people of color since the early 1980s. They're an anonymous group of women artists who maintain their anonymity by wearing gorilla masks. A play on the word gorilla, which refers to guerrilla warfare as well, and by adopting pseudonyms of famous women artists like Frida Kahlo, Kathy Kalwitz, Alice Neal, and so on. They're known for their public activist art, which takes the form of billboards, such as this famous one calling out the sexism of art museums. This poster right here, do women have to be naked to get into the Met Museum? Because <laughs> it said only 5% of the exhibition It says that only 5% of the artists in the modern art section are women, but 85% of the nudes are female. But they're also known for their work's intersectionality, as they focus not just on feminist issues, but also on racial inequality. By plastering their posters all over New York City, they called out art museums and galleries in a very public way. They continue to do so, actually, to this day, showing that their work is still far from done. Another cause that's provoked a lot of activist art in recent years has to do with immigration and the crisis at the southern border. This topic has really heated up since the 2016 election as the anti-immigrant, especially anti-Mexican immigrant rhetoric has been amplified. But last year in particular, in response to the outrage over the Trump administration's detainment of children, we saw a lot of public art about this issue. However, we've also seen some more positive takes on the topic, as artists have found ways to use public art to bring people together at the border. This seesaw at the southern border, for example, which was installed for just a short time last summer, used the divisive image of the border wall to connect people on either side of the wall through a playful and colorful seesaw. Three neon pink seesaws poke through a large black metal fence, connecting kids of all ages between Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, and El Paso, Texas. The idea was actually formed 10 years ago from two California professors, including architect Ronald Rael, who also teaches at the University of California. The thought was that even though people were separated, the seesaw would unite them. We are architects, we are designers, that's all. But this is an act of activism because we gather people here to have fun, to talk, and to be happy. The National Guard looks on as kids teeter up and down. Ronald says the seesaw is a symbol for relations between the U.S. and Mexico. 
If you do something on one side, it will have an impact on the other side. And that's what happens politically between the United States and Mexico. What they do there impacts here. What they do here, it will impact there. It's the same with the seesaw. Driving home the point that we are all connected. All right, so that's all for this week. I hope you all are doing good. Please stay in touch and let me know if there's anything I can do to help. And in the meantime, take care, everyone. I'll see you soon.